So let's work out what fuzziness, what blurriness diffraction implies for a telescope. So let's say we have the mirror or lens or aperture of a telescope here of diameter d. And assuming the telescope is correctly built, if you get light coming in here, it will all be brought to a focus at some particular point. Now, if it was an ideal telescope, the light from any other position would not contribute to what you're picking up here on that particular pixel. So if the light was coming from any other angle at all, it would land somewhere else on the detector. So now let's consider light coming from a different angle, the light you would like to go somewhere else. So we'll say this angle here is theta. And you want none of that light to get to that point. Now, if the light's coming straight, all the waves add up in phase here. So, for example, if it's a peak here, it'll be a peak all the way here. If it's a trough here, it's a trough all the way here. And your optics is designed so all those peaks will add up and give you in phase signal here. If the light's coming from an angle, though, the waves are going to be coming in something like this. And you see that, let's say these are the peaks, when it's a peak here, it's not a peak over there. It's a little bit different from a peak. So let's say, for example, that that length there we're going to call L. Now, if L was a wavelength, then when it's a peak here, it'll also be a peak there, but a different peak. So it might be like the peak of this one and the peak of that wave. So in the middle, it'll be a trough. So peak, trough, middle, peak. If it was lambda over 2, then when it's a peak here, it'll be a trough there and sort of halfway between the peak and the trough in the middle, and so on. And what that means is, if you had all peaks along here, it all adds up in phase over there. If it's got a peak and a trough and a peak, then it absolutely won't add up in phase over there. It'll all cancel out. So generally speaking, if L, this distance here, if L is about a wavelength, then the things are not going to add up in phase there. If L is much smaller than the wavelength, like a tenth of wavelength, you're still going to get maybe not quite all peaks, but fairly close, and so you'll still get some light over there. So that's our requirement. If the path difference from one end to the other is about a wavelength, then you're not going to get light from this angle contributing over here, which means, for example, if this was light from the star and that was the planet, you could separate them nice and clearly. If L is much less than a wavelength of light, then there's going to be some contamination. Some of the light from both will contribute, and so it'll be very hard to tell the planet apart from the star. OK, so what we need to do is work out what L is. So let's zoom in now. So we've got the parallel waves. We've got the waves coming in at an angle theta. And we'll do a right angle wave front there. And what we're going to work out is what L is. We know the diameter D of the telescope mirror. Now, if this is theta, that's a right angle. So this must be 90 minus theta. So that must be theta. So from trigonometry, um, this is a right angle triangle. So the opposite is L. The hypotenuse is D. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse L over D. But now we can play a, a trick. If you remember the small angle approximation for theta less than about 10 degrees, sine theta is very close to tan theta and is very close to theta. They're all about the same thing. Only works for very small angles, but in this case the difference between a planet and a star is going to be a tiny fraction of an arc second or maybe an arc second or two, so it's a very small angle, so it's a good approximation here. So instead of writing sine theta, we can just write theta, as long as theta is measured in radians. So what we actually have is theta equals L over D. But if you remember... The requirement to get the light not contributing was L is about the wavelength, so that's going to be the wavelength over D. So that, in fact, is the equation for diffraction limit. 
that roughly speaking, if the angle is equal to, in radians, is equal to the wavelength divided by the diameter, you're okay. If the angle's much smaller than that, you're in trouble. You're not going to see things very clearly. Technically speaking, for a perfectly circular aperture, you can add up, you know, peak, slightly off a peak, slightly more off a peak, all the way down to trough, all the way over there, and it turns out it comes out as 1.2 lambda over d. But just straight lambda over d will work fine for the purposes of this course. So what is that for the Hubble Space Telescope? For the Hubble Space Telescope, it works at optical wavelengths, so lambda is about, say, 0.5 micrometers. Diameter of the Hubble Space Telescope is 2.4 meters. So the diffraction limit, the angular limit, is going to be 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6 to convert from micrometers into meters over 2.4, which is 2 by 10 to the minus 7 radians, which is 0 0.04 arc seconds. Pretty good. Um, considering from the ground, you might get 10 times worse than that, even in the best sites, but still not perfectly sharp.